डिसरप्शन इज द मोस्ट बास्टाइज टर्म इन द स्टार्टअप इको सिस्टम जो बोलता है मैं डिसरप्टिव टेक्नोलॉजी बना रहा हूँ वो पैसे नहीं बना रहा होता ऐसा मैं नहीं कहता ऐसे स्टेटिस्टिक्स कहते हैं और ऐसे बहुत सारे स्टार्टअप हैं जिनका नाम हम सुनते हैं इनफैक्ट ज्यादातर डिसरप्टिव स्टार्टअप की जो कहानियां हम सुनते हैं वो यूजली जो सक्सेस स्टोरीज होती है उनकी सुनते हैं उनके अलावा जो नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन 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 परसेंट ऑफ द स्टार्ट फील्ड उसके बारे में ज्यादा लोग बात नहीं करते हैं तो वाइस क्रैक का वीडियो हम देख रहे हैं जहाँ पे एक बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक के बारे में डिस्कशन हो रही है नेम ऑफ द वीडियो इज स्टार्टअप कल्चर इज अप लेट्स गेट डाउन इट वे Disruption. Disruptive technologies. A disruptive innovation. Disruptor. A technology disruption. For the last 30 years, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and startups have eagerly embraced the concept of disruptive innovation. Now we've seen this in Silicon Valley's TechCrunch Disrupt. Or if that's too embarrassing, there's also a Bluetooth suppository, and that goes right where you think it goes. And the glass onion. Disruptors have a symbol. But lately, big tech's been in layoff mode. We've seen a parade of TV shows about disruptors turned scammers. Also, Teslas just keep like blowing up. Like you buy that car for a lot of money, and then it just self destructs because Elon. It seems that disruptive innovation may not be as solid a business strategy as we've been led to believe. So, is disruption ushering in a techno utopia, or is this business philosophy kind of well a scam? Let's find out in this wisecrack edition: disruption culture, deep or dumb. As long as there's been a marketplace, there's been disruption. Democracy disrupted the supremacy of the monarchy. The Model T disrupted the horse and carriage. Coca-Cola disrupted water, and BTS disrupted One Direction. However, disruption didn't emerge as a culture until the mid-1990s. In reaction to massive layoffs in the 80s, aspiring C-suite rebels created startups to take back power from the man and forge their own commercial destinies. These individuals were later dubbed disruptors by Harvard professor Clay Christensen, who wrote about the startup phenomenon and the downfall of well-established companies in his book The Innovator's Dilemma. Most notably, Christensen wrote about his theory of disruptive innovation, the pattern in which up-and-coming companies develop new technologies to offer cheaper and inferior alternatives to products already available on the market. This was a technique companies like Zara used to start the fast fashion phenomenon. Disruptive innovation took the business world by storm, and it would eventually be dubbed the most influential business theory of the early 21st century. Over that period, companies like Tesla, Uber, Airbnb, Facebook, and Netflix were applauded as major disruptors, and everyone else wanted to hop on the bandwagon. Even long-standing companies hired innovators. Specialists to help their businesses wreak profitable havoc, but as the gospel of disruptive innovation spread far and wide, no one really questioned whether or not it actually worked. That is, until another Harvard professor, Jill Lepore, came along with several critiques of the theory in 2014, and the business world was not happy about it. Firstly, Lepore took issue with Christensen's advice to use theory to guide data collection. As anyone who's taken eighth grade biology knows, this is the opposite of how good science works. It turns out, in the innovator's dilemma, Christensen selectively included case studies that supported his theory of how disruptive companies beat their more established competitors, and neglected evidence that made him look. Kind of dumb. Dippin' Dots failed to disrupt any well-known companies in the ice cream market. How does the theory explain that? Also, in the comments, let me know if you had Dippin' Dots. They were my favorite on school field trips. Got to go to the Kennedy Space Center once, and they had Dippin' Dots there. And it was like, this is the future. They're serving them near the space shuttle. So, but now, why would why would you eat those? They're terrible. The second issue Lepore had with Christensen's theory is that it's not reliably predictive. It only works in hindsight. Lepore points out that in 2007, Christensen told Business Week that the prediction of the theory would be that Apple won't succeed with the iPhone. Five years and a hundred and fifty billion dollars later. Christensen took back his original prediction and argued that iPhones had been disruptive after all. He'd just been mistaken that they disrupted phones when, in actuality, they disrupted laptops. The third. What they are saying is the author of the innovators' dilemma was selective with the data that was used to come up with that theory in the first place. So, this means that data is not chosen correctly. Third major issue Lepore had with the theory of disruptive innovation is that it's basically bulletproof via circular reasoning. It goes a little something like this: If an established company doesn't disrupt hard enough, it will fail. But when a startup succeeds, it's because it disrupted. But when it fails, it's a success because failure is a hallmark of disruptive innovation. When an established company succeeds, it's only because Because it hasn't failed yet, and when any of these things happen, it's only further evidence of disruption. Did you follow that? Because, because I have no idea what I just said. But I guess it sounds right, according to these geniuses. Despite these obvious issues, the majority of the problems surrounding disruption culture stem from how the theory has been co-opted by venture capitalists, thought leaders, and society. Quick note: we should not have thought leaders. That shouldn't be a term that exists. We can have intellectuals or philosophers or theorists, but thought leaders? I'm good. The term disruption had been used so much, it almost ceased to have any meaning. Sort of like, dude, or like. Like leading some to deem it a meaningless buzzword. 
Even Christensen himself wasn't thrilled with some of the ways this theory was being applied, saying, I never thought that people would then flexibly take an idea, twist it, and use it to justify whatever they wanted to do in the first place. Why was the concept of disruption? This is problem, hai, pata hai, because disruptions are so much subjective that going against the tide and some very far-fetched idea which might or might not be feasible, either economically or technologically, उसको आप आइडिया लेवल पे या फिर पेपर लेवल पे आप उसको जस्टिफाई कर सकते हो कि भाई ये ये रिसोर्सेस लगेंगे इतना पैसा लगेगा ये करेंगे और ये हो जाएगा और उसको जब तक आप कीजिएगा तब तो टाइम जाता है ना तो ये तो सब्जेक्टिव हो गया पूरा का पूरा मामला well, quite frankly, it's because Americans were just obsessed with innovation. Now, in the wake of the Enlightenment, technological innovation was connected to humanistic principles, i.e. we innovate to expand our reach, understanding, and expression of what makes us human. And a type of moral goodness was baked into the very concept. But the twin forces of global militarism and capitalism stepped in as war and commercial exploitation became profitable. Today, innovation is arguably quite anti-human in that it's driven wholly by the market. Even innovations that actually hurt humanity are still good in the light of market logic. You know, like, like fracking. You know what fracking is, right? It's probably bad. Maybe you like it. Maybe in the comments you'll be like, oh, you don't like fracking? And it's just like, put it in my house and say it, big boy. The hype around disruption culture is so huge, it's difficult to know whether it's deserved or not. MLMs, multi level marketing schemes, are technically disruptors. By turning everyday people into salespeople who sell directly to their networks, they render traditional retail obsolete. But of course, the business world views MLMs as a scam. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se. It's. Which they are, and we did a whole video on that. You go watch it. And yet, interestingly enough, disruptors use a lot of the same tactics with little to no criticism. So what do MLMs and startups have in common? Well, for one, both focus the narrative on the winners. Disruption fails more often than it succeeds. When it's talked about in the business community, it feels like every company who's ever disrupted is a dark horse turned Kentucky Derby champion. The media pushes all the failed companies under the rug to praise the few lottery winners, like Skype, YouTube, and Facebook. This is the equivalent of convincing people to buy- Yeah, 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 Nikki, one success ke piche, there are millions and millions of failures ki kahani also. Uske baare mein bhi into Mary Kay by showing the one saleswoman who won the pink Cadillac instead of the thousands of salespeople who were exploited and lost tons of money. When a startup succeeds, it serves as confirmation bias that the system works, and more existentially, that the American dream is alive and well. And because of this circular reasoning, if disruptors fail, they're dismissed as not having disrupted hard enough. Never mind that 75% of startups go under, 90% never generate revenue, and they have twice the employee turnover of established companies, blah, blah, blah. Also, much like many leaders in MLM circles, many disruptors become celebrities with cool dogmas. Mark Zuckerberg said, move fast and break things. Steve Jobs encouraged people to put their dent in the universe. While these principles sound pretty sick at first glance, they're also conveniently used as an excuse to mistreat employees. As Forbes writer Phil Lewis writes, many scale disruptors hypocritically argue that they're upending industries for the benefit of humanity when their endeavors leave a pile of human roadkill in their wake. Look no further than WeWork's Adam Newman. He preached that his company stood for we, not me, going so far as trying to copyright the word we. Can a lawyer in the comments explain how people can copyright words? That just seems insane. He manipulated the idea of collective altruism to encourage his employees into working brutal hours. Then, the Kis -kis ne wo Adam Newman wali movie dekhi hai? Please comment section mein batana kaisi hai. We were thinking of watching and reviewing the movie as well. Altruist left his community to cash out and laid off 2,400 people. Understandably, massive protests ensued. The underlying issue is the qualities of the disruptors that made them successful, self-confident, decisive, willful, and confrontational also can make them terrible managers. As Lewis notes, in high-stress situations, disruptor bosses often rely on intimidation to get their way. They also foster adversarial relationships among coworkers and generally create work environments that are psychologically unsafe. In other words, ye bada debatable statement hai because it generalizes kar raha hai. हर बॉस वैसा नहीं होता है इट्स अ वेरी इंडिविजुअलिस्टिक थिंग ऑफ कोर्स देर इज अ प्रेशर कुकर सिचुएशन वन इट कम्स टू डिस्ट्रक्टिव इनोवेशन और इनोवेटिव कंपनीज जैसा भी आप इसको कहना चाहें लेकिन ये बहुत ही एक इंडिविजुअल मामला होता है कि एक बॉस या फिर एक मैनेजर या फिर एक प्रोमोटर किस तरीके से बिहेव करेगा अपने एम्प्लॉय के साथ यू कैन जनरलाइज द स्टेटमेंट इमेजिन वर्किंग फॉर प्लेन एट दार्ट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम on average startup employees work 50 to 60 hours per week which is 25 to 50% more than the average american worker also akin to mlms disruptive company plus kaam zyada hota hai lekin fir startup mein kaam bhi wahi karte hain jinko maza aata hai waise kaam karne mein so nobody is forcing you to work in a startup you're working there with your own free will and because you're either passionate about the project or you're passionate about the team so again very generalistic statement but these shift risks onto their employees often via the gig economy uber doordash postmates and instacart shift responsibilities previously held by employees onto their beloved independent contractors they promise the alluring opportunity to be your own boss by that they mean assume all ये टैक्टिक्स ऑफ कोर्स बहुत सारी कंपनीज यूज करती हैं यहाँ पे भी जोमेटो स्विगी ओला उबर इनके साथ भी सेम ये है 
अभी आई थिंक कुछ दिन पहले देर वॉज सम इशू ऑफ वन टैक्सी सर्विस सेइंग दैट बिकॉज द ड्राइवर इज एन इंडिपेंडेंट कॉन्ट्रैक्टर वी विल नॉट बी एबल टू टेक claim for any wrong doing that they had done to one of the passengers so of course this is again a tactic which is used by a lot of these companies but again ye bhi company to company or culture to culture depend karta hai but ha statistically abhi tak jitne bhi badi companies hain thoda sa to yaar legally and uh, economically apne aap ko back karne ke liye they use these kind of tactics because they can that's the thing A legal and financial responsibility. Now, contractors get to pay for their healthcare out of pocket, cover business expenses like car maintenance, gas, and insurance, try to take the financial hit when work is slow. We also did a whole video about the gig economy, so check that out if you work in the gig economy and work is slow and you need stuff to watch and not focus on the fact that we live in an economic system that's just trying to kill us all. So, is disruption a scam? Not exactly, but it's used as an excuse to run a business like one. Of course, not all disruptors are bad. Impossible Foods made it easier to cut back on meat consumption, which is good for the environment. Warby Parker makes glasses and contact lenses way more accessible. Patreon, our favorite disruptor, circumvented the advertising, marketing, and data collection side of things to ensure creative life. Like us are paid for their work. We actually love Patreon, and, and fun fact, they give creators of content a huge share of all the money they earn, more than any other. So if you ever hear someone being like, "Hey, join our Patreon," it's probably because Patreon takes care of creators. Hypothetically, why strike Patreon? Click the link. Let's go. We're not arguing against change. Disruption is a natural part of the business ecosystem and the human condition. What feels not so great is how disruption culture has been co-opted by business leaders to treat workers like cattle. We've talked a lot about disruption culture from the perspective of business leaders and venture capitalists, but what happens when employees get bit by the disruption bug? Shockingly, the innovative bosses don't love it. When employees quiet quit, which is just working. in normal amounts or act their wage they're lazy and entitled because disruption can't disrupt the economic labor or political systems themselves but simply disrupt the ways that a small number of people are able to make money within that system and employees working less and getting paid more doesn't help the bottom line we saw workers get their own disruptive moment in late 2020 with the great resignation when the power shifted in favor of workers forcing employers to up their game and introduce flexible work arrangements increased wages and revamped benefits along with this a recent resurgence of unions has triggered a new wave of disruption last year union representation jumped 53% and a Gallup poll found labor unions reached their highest level of public support in the US since Since 1965. So, is there any middle option between owner-centric disruption at the cost of workers or worker-centric disruption at the cost of, well, billionaires? A recent example is a UK study on the possibility of a four-day work week. The 61 companies with around 2,900 employees spent six months piloting the program, and the results were pretty awesome. Employees reported 39% less stress, 71% less burnout, and overall increases in mental and physical health. But it wasn't just a win for the workers, as when compared to a similar period from previous years, organizations reported revenue increases 35% on average, and the number of staff leaving companies decreased by 57% during the trial period, and 50. Six of the 61 companies that participated are going to continue with the four-day work week. So hey, Enthusiast Gaming Incorporated, who owns Wisecrack, why not give it a try? It worked for these companies. It could work for you. While it's not a total upending of the system, it's a model of work that could radically change workers' lives, giving them a full day back to do whatever the f- they want with. However, high inflation and fear of an impending recession are slowly shifting power back toward employers. Over 100,000 employees have been laid off by big tech this year, and media outlets are reporting that 80% of people regret quitting in the Great Resignation. They're now calling it the Great Regret. And yeah, despite fears of a global recession, about 61% of American workers are thinking about quitting in 2020. Three. With U.S. workers refusing to back down, maybe there's hope employees can hold on to their bargaining power and continue to disrupt the business world for years to come. Or we'll get disrupted out of our homes and become hunter-gatherers again. Who knows? But what do you think? Is disruption culture the best path to progress, or is it just kind of a scam? Can employees use disruption to reclaim power and beat the system, or at least call it a tie? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much to our patrons for their support. Who use a A very interesting video. Crazy, but funny. But the points still stay valid. Disruption or innovation. Ki jaha tak baat hai na? Bahut hi market to market depend karta hai. Jaise abhi pura ko pura AI ka wave aaya hua hai. And of course, disruption is happening. And people are trying out things. Or disruption ke phases aate hain. Alag alag time mein, alag alag ecosystem mein, alag alag markets mein. So, for example, agar ap uh, 2011-12 ki baat karoge, to yahan pe startup इकोसिस्टम में बूम आया था यहाँ पे लॉजिस्टिक्स एंड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन वाला पूरा का पूरा इकोसिस्टम डिस्टर्ब हुआ विद ओला एंड ऊबर एंड टैक्सी फॉर श्योर कमिंग इन फिर उसके बाद 14-15-16 में पूरा का पूरा फाइनेंस इकोसिस्टम या पेमेंट्स वाला जो पूरा का पूरा इकोसिस्टम है वो डिस्टर्ब हुआ गिवन एक्सलरेटेड विद द एडवेंट ऑफ बोथ जियो एंड द होल डिमोनिटाइजेशन विच हैपन इन इंडिया उसके बाद जब कोविड आया तो एक्टेक इकोसिस्टम में काफी सारा पैसा जाता हुआ दिखा तो आई थिंक डिस्ट्रप्शन और वीसी मनी का काफी ज्यादा कोरिलेशन होता है जहां पे वीसी मनी ज्यादा जाता है पंप इन होता है और वो भी इसीलिए होता है क्योंकि उस मार्केट में एक अपॉर्चुनिटी दिखती है कहीं ना कहीं वीसी को तो बहुत ही सब्जेक्टिव मामला है जहां तक रूल्स रेगुलेशन एंड एम्प्लॉई कॉन्डक्ट की बात है ये बहुत ही कल्चर टू कल्चर मैटर करता है मतलब बिना एक अच्छे कल्चर के आप एक कंपनी रन ही नहीं कर सकते बहुत ही 
टॉक्सिक एनवायरमेंट हो जाता है विनिंग एट ऑल कॉस्ट की जहां तक बात है वो भी अगर आपके एम्प्लॉय खुश रहेंगे तभी होगा इट्स नॉट जस्ट ऑलवेज अबाउट मेकिंग मनी ऑफकोर्स स्पीड ब्रेक ब्रेक होनी चाहिए सही लोगों को हायर करो ऑफ कोर्स ऐसे एनवायरनमेंट में जहां ब्रेक नेक स्पीड में काम हो रहा है हायरिंग मिस्टेक्स होती हैं बट यही बस संभालना जरूरी है द फाउंडर्स एंड द ओनर्स ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इवन द इन्वेस्टर्स नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड मेनी एट टाइम्स कहाँ पे आपको स्लो जाना चाहिए और फाउंडेशन आपको सही से बिल्ड करनी चाहिए बट बहरहाल दो हजार माई थॉट वॉट डू यू गाइज थे डिसरप्टिव इनोवेशन या डिसरप्शन नंबर वन आपके क्या थॉट है उसके बारे में नंबर टू फ्रॉम अ कल्चर परस्पेक्टिव आप किसी स्टार्टअप में काम करते हो या फिर कोई ऐसी स्टार्टअप को जानते हो जहाँ पे स्टार्टअप कल्चर थोड़ा सा ऐसा यू नॉट टॉक्सिक है तो प्लीज कॉमेंट सेक्शन में हमें बताना एंड स्टार्टअप और बिजनेस के बारे में और न्यूज के लिए प्लीज दिल्ली